Okay, good morning. What we're going to be doing today is glow plugs on a Mark 6 Golf GTD 170. Um, no specific issues with the glow plugs, but I'm um, starting to get a bit of a delayed uh, crank. So I'm just doing a bit of preemptive maintenance on it just to keep it in tip top condition because this is my daily driver. So, um, first thing we're going to do is make sure the car's off, obviously. Uh, we're going to remove the engine cover, which is on four suckers which you just have to yank pretty hard on um, you can just see them uh, there oh, no, there there and you know, basically in all four corners so nice and easy and what we're going to be looking at is these are the glow plugs here they're just like what you'd probably consider old spark plug um, holders okay so the first thing that we're going to have to do is uh, remove a couple of harnesses just to make our life a little bit easier. So on the common rail here, we just have to remove that sensor, pressure sensor, and then on number one spark plug, uh, sorry, spark plug injector, just remove that one. And that'll just allow us to lift this harness a little bit easier. What I've got is just a set of uh, old brake uh, pin pliers, which just makes pulling up the spark plug that was quite easy quite easy in fact what i'm going to do there's a torx bit i don't know if you can see it just there and there's one there just holding this coolant pipe on um so i'm just going to remove that just to make my life just that little bit easier uh, and that is i think going to be a t30 yeah it is and i'll undo it instead of doing it up that'll probably help just gives us a little bit more access to the four plugs and having undone those two that makes life easy as well there is a hook and a clip just on the on the fuel rail so you've just got to navigate that round there just to lift it up and then give that a tug make sure you don't pull on those wires just uh, pull the, the plugs themselves because if they've been in there a while like mine have ten, 10 years it may take a little bit of effort just to get them up like that one did. There we go. Uh, and I should be able to pull them all out now. At least those two in there. Oh, okay. oh, come out. And then this one's probably going to be the most difficult. No doubt. What we could do is just pull that clip up. Gives a bit more room on the cable. There we go. And that gives us access to the glow plugs which you can see down the holes there now what you can get on these is a little bit of uh, aluminium oxide forming in the bottom of the holes and as you take the glow plug out it can drop into the drop into the uh, cylinder it can go straight into the engine cylinder so what i've done is made it like a proper gypsy uh, Gypsy, one word, uh, make do um, contraption with a bit of 15 mil pipe on the end. And what I'm gonna do is use the little hoover just in case there's any debris down in the bottom of those holes because what I don't wanna do is take the glow plugs out and then drop that debris into the cylinder. So I'll just hoover around. So what I'm doing is that's a new plug and that's going into the cylinder head. It'll just drop it over the top of the, over the top and get any debris from around the cylinder. this Side. So the next thing to do now is to take out the glow plugs. And that is a just use a 10mm extra deep with a with a socket. 
obviously I wouldn't use any sort of power tools on these especially just undoing them and especially doing them up due to the fact that it's all aluminium so oh that one was tired um yeah you don't want to make in a, a mess with impact tools oh i don't want that one so it seems too tight sometimes i just might have to be a little bit ginger with it so that it doesn't shear so just backing it off there we go and then tighten it up again and then hopefully that's then come undone so that these this is a 2010 it's 2020 now so these have been in 10 years i've had the car probably six years so i'm pretty sure that they've never been done what i can do now is just zip, zip them out And then use the hopefully this will reach down inside and I'll be able to grab them. No, I won't. I think worst comes to worst, you could get some long handled. Oh, there we go. And there you go, there's the first one. Visually, they look okay. But, uh, yeah, like I say, a little bit of a delayed start. doing a bit of preemptive maintenance hopefully so because the winter's sort of cold days are starting to come in I don't know if you can see in that one like a powdery stuff on it so that's the aluminium oxide that's left over in there that I'm going to hoover out again once we're done okay so I've got all four out now but I'm trying to show you what I mean about the aluminium oxide. It's quite difficult to see. I don't know if if you'll focus on it or not. But it's I've seen the left-hand corner of that that plug hole. Uh, difficult to see. There's there's basically a powder there, and it's in it's in every one. Just a small amount of powder. The aluminium oxide, just a little bit of corrosion that builds up on the aluminium, just fell into the hole. Um, so what I'm going to do is use my use my Frankenstein's Hoover, and I'll just give that a Hoover out just to make sure that we get all that out of there. So I'll set you back down here, and then we'll just get down each hole. Hoover doesn't like it, but here we go. No debris left down there, which is good, which is exactly what we want. So what I've gone for, I didn't go to VW for the uh, glow plugs. I've just gone to, just got some generic Bosch ones. But these are the ones that came out. And although they've got, I think they've got a VW, I don't know, where's the lens? Ooh. Don't know if you can see that, they've got a VW stamp on them. They are actually just Bosch spark plugs, uh, spark plugs, glow plugs, exactly the same. Um, one thing I did note actually was this one had quite a lot of soot on the end of it and that came out of the right hand side. So what will that be? One, two, that would be number four, depending on which way you count them, number one or number four, but basically the right hand side as you look at it there. 
So I don't know if that's a sign of any issues, but anybody got any ideas what that could be, then let me know whether this one's failed. I've not got any error codes up, so like I say, I'm literally just doing it as a bit of preventative maintenance for a bit, little bit of a delayed start. But yeah, I think we can start looking at them in now. What I might do is just put a tiny bit of copper slip just on there, just to stop them seizing in there if I ever do them again. Um, but for anybody that wants to know what the part number is, there we go. They're the ones. Good oak. Lovely job. So, just find my anti seize. So I'm just going to put a real, real small amount on there, I think. Just as a bit of a preventative. Yeah, just a tiny little smear. Just as a preventative. Hopefully stop them seizing for another 10 years. That's not going to help. Get them in. And we'll get them tweaked down. I did a bit of research before I started, and it said that this should be at 18 Newton meters. So I'm going to see what that feels like on the torque wrench. But I don't always believe everything I find on the internet. If it feels too tight, I won't do it. Um, and like I said before, don't use any impact gun or air gun or anything on these because there's not much thread to play with and it's all aluminium, so do it by hand. And then hopefully we shouldn't have any issues with cross threading. Undo. It's the tightest one to do up as well, so it's not too bad. I don't know if we've got anything going on there. Alright, let's just snug them up. No, I'm quite happy with how tight I've just done them by hand. You don't need to be mega tight, they're only tiny. But let's just get the torque wrench out for. Grins and giggles, Let's see what it says. All right, so using my super accurate, expensive torque wrench. Nah, I'm, I'm, yeah, that's enough for me. Oh, there we go, it clicked anyway. There we go, okay, so we're just about borderline of where how far I was willing to go with it. that will do for me. Don't want to push my luck. So, the reverse now. Let's load them back up. This one's obviously the tricky one because it's a bit tighter. But we can just manipulate it in. Once I put it all back together, is I'll do a, a start on it, and we'll just see if that delay starts still there. So that's a common rail clip back on. In fact, we'll get these hooks on the first. And if you can see, just these plastic hooks. I'll try and get them under. There we go. Plastic hooks. That one is on. That one's on. That one's 
on number one injector on with a click so it must be good ignore all the oil on here if we just spilt it topping up okay okay so that's the sound deadening and heat shooting back on so what we need to do now is just button up these this little constant bleed pipe from the uh, coolant Tight, but it'll go, it'll go. Come on. There we go. There's one. Final check, everything looks okay, nothing's falling apart, nothing's leaking horrendously. I think we're good to go. Not bad, not bad. What you can do is just put a bit of uh, water, like spit on these to make them go down a bit harder if they're not popping in, but normally they're all right. Don't put any oil on them because it'll start perishing the rubbers. There we go, there we go. Boom, right, okay, so what we'll do now, have a bit of a tidy up. Uh, okay, let's go for a start up. So what we're talking, 81,000 miles. Like I said, I had it, I've had it from about 50,000 miles and I've had it about five or six years, but I'm starting to do loads more mileage now. So just starting to look after it as much as possible. So let's go for a start. Let's see what the glow plugs do. Right, they went off quite quickly. Seems a bit better. All I'd say is that the outside temperature is probably about 13 degrees at the minute, so it's probably not going to help us too much. But uh, yeah, apart from a tidy up, it's uh, back, back to good running. Well, I say that, apart from that that I found this morning. Wonderful, just what you need on an 18 inch tyre. What size we are? 225, 40, 18. Luckily, I had a flat on the back and I changed them as a pair. So I kept one the other side, which is part worn as well. So hopefully it won't put my steering off too much. But yeah, I'll stick that one on and then I should be good to go. So that's me. All right. Thanks for watching. So just out of curiosity, I thought I'd check. Uh, I found out that there should be one ohm. Um, resistance in between uh the glow plug so i thought i'd give them a check and just just to show you something this is what i found so just checking the terminals together obviously my test is not 100 percent accurate but i'm um, going between the sort of body and the you've got like 0.6 of an ohm uh, or 0.6 i'd say that's probably about right now if you remember but then you remember the the one that was quite sooty that I said was on the right hand side got absolutely no continuity at all going through it so that's the bus one with zero continuity that's the one we just tested with point six Yeah, point four five ish, and then we'll just which one is it? That one, just that one that had the uh, soot on the end of it. Absolutely nothing. So, 
even though the car was showing no codes, um, we just noticed a little bit of a lumpy running on startup in very, very early startup when it was cold and uh, yeah, a little bit of an extended crank, nothing, nothing, nothing excessive, but just a little bit, you know, I could just feel that something's right. Bear in mind, I drive this all day, every day. Um, I just noticed that. So yeah, didn't even know it was gone. Didn't throw up any codes uh, and that was open circuit. So we're obviously just running on three uh, glow plugs instead of the four. Cool. All right. Thanks for watching.